Assalamu alaikum friends welcome to lecture 10 of SBL and today's topic is public sector governance and this is the last topic under section B that is governance because the next lecture will be on the your third section section C strategy okay this is a small topic but it's equally important okay because in SBL it's not always the private sector that comes you might even get a public sector in the case study because the whole case study in SBL, that integrated case study is based on one company. So that company could either be private or either it could be public. All this while the previous lecture was focusing on private sector. Profit, share price, this, that. Now our, and for this lecture, our focus will be towards the public sector governance. What are the differences? How it is different from the private sector? Okay. How it is governed, how it is funded things like that so let's see what are we going to cover in this lecture okay we are going to cover the stakeholders and the public sector how the stakeholders are different in the public sector we have already covered the stakeholders in the private sector customer supplier manager how it is different in the public sector problem of agents in the public sector same way how private sector has agency issue public sector also have agency issue but maybe it might be different then other forms of organization in the public sector Gover governance arrangements that's the main thing how it is different changing policy objectives strategic objectives and leadership in the public sector agency not-for-profit organization financial objectives see not-for-profit organizations also they do have financial objectives but it's different from the private sector because no matter whether it's a profit or not-for-profit organization solely even if their prime motive is not profit they do need profit to run the sector okay and funding strategies for NFP, that is not for profit organizations. How do you fund? These are the areas we're going to cover in this lecture. So starting with public sector governance, okay? There are three predominant types that exist in most economies, okay? There are ranges of organizations. Organizations could be in various form, could be set up in a various form, but this are the three which is seen in the economy. Number one is private sector. Okay, number two is charity. And number three is public sector. Private sector, profit. We all see that. Charity, they are for charitable causes, whatever the causes they have set up. Okay. And public sector is for delivering those goods and services which is not given by the private sector. Okay, it is not given for the from the profit sector, profit entities. Okay. Now, stakeholders and public sector. See, when you come into the public sector, the, the, the re stakeholder relationship is very complex. It's not easy like private sector. Okay, auditor is accountable to the shareholder. Audit committee is accountable to the shareholder. Board of debt is accountable to the shareholder. It's not like easy like this. So it's very complex. That, therefore, the claims that stakeholder can have is very complicated in the public sector. Okay. Second, there is a particular sensitivity to the taxpayer's fund. Why? Because if you see the taxpayer, we all pay tax, right? To the government. And those money is only used, the government uses those money to give, give us the services back. Having roads, hospitals, schools, same fund is used. So, indirectly, we are the principal in the principal agent relation the government the one who is taking care of the fund is the is the agent so the taxpayer is a principal so how that taxpayers fund is used it is a very uh, sensitive issue okay why because most of the time it has been seen that the one who is actually paying the tax is not receiving the benefit it is someone else only who is getting the benefit okay so that's why this gives a rise to the question of principal agent within the public sector. Because principal is the one who hires agent to do work on behalf. So in that way, if you are saying taxpayer has to be the one who gives the tax and he only has to receive the benefit. But in this case, it's not always that the taxpayer is getting the benefit. Maybe you are paying tax but someone else in the society is getting that benefit. You understanding? So the, the relationship is very complex. It's not very directly. You cannot identify that he's the principal, this is the agent. So now... Because of that, there are problems of agency. What are the problems of agency? 
see private and public companies i'm not saying public sector public sector is something else public company is something else okay do not get confused with this too private and public companies have shareholders okay correct they 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 invest their money and they are the shareholder but public sector organizations they carry out important roles on behalf of those who fund the service okay they are carrying a role on behalf of someone else whom the one who funds the service man mainly the taxpayer taxpayer is the principal in this case and the users of the service whoever is going to use the service so the organization the public sector organization is performing task on behalf of the user of the service or taxpayer or sometimes it could be one same person example patient in a hospital so public sector organization they are building up a hospital for home for the patient okay the patient is the one who is going to use that service the patient is the one who is going to pay the tax so they are the principal the patient is the principal in this case public sector organization is the agent okay because they are on behalf of for the benefit of patient only okay second the objective is different in public and private sector okay we all know private sector they are very competitive okay whereas in the public sector they are not so competitive because their main goal is for the social purpose delivering services efficiently effectively and good value for money okay so now that's why objective developing objective for the public sector is very difficult okay but still you can come up to solution on how whether they have achieved the objective or not how by by coming to 3 e's use the model for 3 e's what is 3 e's that is the value for money that's how you see whether you are getting a good value for money or not in the public sector by using this model 3 e's so 3 e stands for first e stands for economy then effectiveness then efficiency remember this 3 e for the public sector you have to make use of this 3 e in your answer some way or the other you have to make use of this 3 e's economy means you are getting the service on time with the budget okay so time and budget that means you can uh, economy means what when we say that someone is economical means you are having so obtaining a service at the lowest cost possible okay effectiveness means you are getting what you have uh, you are providing it what was your objective you want to deliver the service and you are delivering it according to the objective that you have in your mind you deliver the service that you have created to provide that is effectiveness efficiency means you are making the best use of the resources okay that means you are giving more output by using less input efficiency so economic effectiveness and efficiency these three are different remember the three is coming to the other forms of organization we were in the public sector we know it is funded by government government is the one who gives this thing other forms of organization this is known as third sector first sector private public third sector what what is the third sector this uh, this is the, this third sector is for those okay this sector it is uh, the main aim of the sector is that it delivers those services or benefits that the other two categories does not deliver like what ngo ngo is one example NGOs comes in the third sector. You don't have to write third sector; it's not so important. Okay, sometimes uh, you might be thinking about what is first sector, second sector, third sector, but know that these are some other forms of organization. They are also in the public sector governance only. Okay, NGOs, non-governmental organization. What is what is their main thing? See, NGOs are usually task oriented. Okay, they NGOs are formed because they have some task in their mind that they have to fulfill. NGOs for women, NGOs for child care, NGOs for old people, NGOs for disabled. There are so many uh, things are there, right? So many purposes, but they are task oriented. That's the feature that you have to know about NGO when you have to, when you are supposed to write. You might get an NGO also in your exam. The chances are very less. Okay, NGOs are not usually given, but what if? So they are task oriented. Okay, they are driven by people with a common interest. Okay, these two things are very important. One, task oriented. Second, driven by people. You need people to run NGO, and they are, all have common interest. 
for example your ngo is to reduce poverty everyone will be having that common interest okay mostly it is for human uh, humanity functions okay one example is red cross you must have all heard about red cross if not you can google and check it's the biggest ngos that you will hear red cross the red cross what is their function things go and check okay now about ngos you have to know how they are funded how they are uh, what is their governance arrangement you sometimes have to differentiate this with the private sector it might be asked as a question what is the difference between this and private sector if it is change, private sector change to ngo what are the differences that's why you have to know this so they are oftenly privately funded ngos are privately funded okay it is managed by executive and non executive both similar like private sector second they have some board of trustees to whom they have to answer okay why that trustees are there to ensure that ngos are in operating in line with their purpose okay that's why that board of trustees will be there then so what is the agency relationship it exists between whom and whom ngo and the donor ngo and the donor the one is donating money there who is the principal who is the agent here the donor is the principal ngo is the agent remember okay donor gives money it is ngo's thing that they take care of the fund so ngo is working on behalf of the donor because without donor ngo cannot work okay now another form this is the second form first is ngo now this is one is quen qua ngos what is qua ngos or quasi ngos quasi autonomous non governmental organization similar to ngo but little difference is there okay they are organizations funded by tax payers but not directly controlled directly by central government central government does not control any but tax payers fund them example for uh, forestry commission okay offering expertise and a degree of independence now qua ngos are often criticized why because they are they do not have a reporting line it's very blurred they don't have a clear reporting line to whom are they accountable no one because that reporting line to whom they have to report is very blurred it's not clear second they are funded by tax payer that's why they have to account okay they have to account for the actions to the tax payer okay but the why why the problem uh, lies then if they have to report to the tax because they have to report to many principals there are several tax payers not just one so you have to report to many principals part of the purpose of this one so it's very difficult to report that okay and agency relationship is unclear in this case coming to the governance arrangements what is the governance arrangements in the public sector okay there is no single mechanism on how you are going to control the objective that you have achieved or how you are going to monitor that you have achieved the objective in the public sector remember okay or even accountability whether it is achieved or not but at least you can have some system something to at least to see that partly you have achieved or not by having some system of reporting and oversight at least in part you can achieve okay if not entirely like in the private sector you see we have auditor they check the financial statements they see but in the public sector how to do that you don't do you don't make usually financial statement because your goal is not for profit sector profit motive it's for giving benefit to the society so who checks that you are accountable or not who monitors who controls whether you have achieved the objective or not and objective is also various objectives it's not financial objective to reduce cost to have sales not like that but some system has is there okay now so this enters those in charge of the service delivery to report to an external body for oversight the one who is giving the service for example you are running in school you have to report that to the external body of oversight there will be some external body that means extra outside your organization outside your school who will be over looking after you oversight supervising whether you are running the services effectively efficiently or economically or not 
So external body of oversight you have to report. It could be board of governors or trustees. This is this this features you have to go through it because this is this will be applicable in the public sector. Okay, when you read the case study, make sure that these are the features that are there or not. If not, it's a private sector, otherwise it's a public sector. Okay. So the oversight body acts in the interest of providers of finance. The taxpayer to ensure the service is delivered on time. So they are on behalf of the taxpayer, remember. Even if they are oversighting the school, let's say school or hospital. Their main thing is they are working on behalf of the taxpayer. They have to see whether the taxpayer's fund is uh, used appropriately or not for the correct purpose. Or even in, uh, at, as in interest of the providers of finance, the one who gives loan to the business. So for the providers of finance, for the taxpayer, okay. Why? So that service is delivered on time or not. Whether it is benefiting the user or not. Memberships may include ex ex executive and non-executive positions. Okay. Here also, they might have executive and non-executive board, similar to the private sector. Now, role of oversight bodies. These are some roles that an oversight body should do in the public sector. Okay. Number one, ensure the service complies with the government rules. Whatever the service you are giving, hospital, okay, the treatments that you are giving have to comply with the government rules. Second, performance targets has to be met. Some performance target has to be there. For example, this year you are trying to reduce the patient waiting uh, time from 15 minutes to 10 minutes. Make sure performance targets are met. Third, who is ensuring this oversight body, the one who is supervising, they have to see whether it is met or not. To set and monitor performance against budget. Budget is very important in public sector. Everything you do is always set against budget only. Compared against the budget. So monitor performance. Third, senior appointments. When you are appointing someone in the senior level, oversee. Then manage performance. Sorry, uh, monitor management performance. Remove underperforming senior managers. These are pretty easy. Okay. And report to higher authority on the organization being monitored. Once it's done, report to the higher author, higher than you, higher than that oversight body. Okay. So these are some features. These are quite uh, pretty uh, easy to remember also. It's not something very difficult that you have to take hours and hours to memorize. Don't memorize the list. Just read one or two times. It's enough. Changing policy objectives. Okay. Changing policy objectives means changing from private to public, public to private, going public to NGO, NGO to charity. Yeah, changing from one this to this and then how objectives will change because it's not always that you will stay as a public or a private sector throughout your entire life you sometimes change in between public goes to private private goes to public yeah so accordingly objectives changes that's why we are taking this also so in uk in uk there's a debate regarding the size and the expense of the defense budget Okay, what should be the size? What should be the expense for the defense budget? In UK, still the debate is going on. So because of that debate, what happened? Argument was raised regarding privatization. They are thinking it's better to privatize rather than keep it in the public sector because it's a huge size and huge expense. That means previously public funded will now be private sector by making, by making it listed on the stock exchange. Okay. One example is in 2013 privatization of the post office in uk post office in uk before it was public sector now it is in the hand of now it is privatized in 2013 because sometimes uh, they might feel that in the public sector they might not be so effective the cost is so huge so better to give it in the private hands you know and we have real life examples also so many things now what are the, what are the favor so we have two in like for and against against changing and for changing let's see for in the favor when you are changing from public to private sector what is the uh, argument for like reason you are going supporting that yes better to change why more efficiency in delivering via profit driven pr performance measure because profit sector they can deliver it more efficiently why competition is there right Everyone will be competing to give more efficient those things. So due to that competition, efficiency will increase. Second, increase competition as I told you. Increase competition again gives you better value for money, uh, better value of money to the customer than the public sector. Third, better quality management. Okay. Then improved governance. Okay. Governance in the 
प्राइवे सेक्टर इज ईजी टू टू अचीव बेटर गवर्नेंस इंप्रूव गवर्नेंस दैन द पब्लिक सेक्टर रिमेम्बर दैट बिकॉज प्रिंसिपल एजेंट लाइन इज क्लियर एंड लॉट ऑफ एरियाज आर देर दैट इज सुपरवाइज ऑडिटर्स आर देर चेकिंग एट राइट नाउ आर्ग्यूमेंट्स अगेंस्ट वाई यू शुड नॉट चेंज बिकॉज प्रॉफिट इज नॉट द मो प्रॉफिट इज नॉट द मोटिव फॉर इम्प्रूव स्ट्रेटेजिक सर्विस एग्जाम्पल हेल्थ सम सेक्टर यू कैन नॉट पुट प्रॉफिट एज अ मोटिव लाइक हेल्थ हाउ कैन यू से दिस थिंग आई वॉन्ट टू इंक्रीज द प्रॉफिट ऑफ दिस हॉस्पिटल मेन थिंग इज हेल्थ सो इन दिस केस इज यू कैन नॉट प्राइवेटाइज इंक्रीज कॉम्पिटिशन विल लीड टू डेट्रीमेंटल चेंज करेक्ट ट्रू कॉम्पिटिशन इज गुड इन वन हैंड एफिशियंसी इंक्रीज बेटर वैल्यू बट ऑन द अदर हैंड डेट्रीमेंटल चेंज इज ऑल्सो देर too much competition correct you will try to reduce cost it might affect the quality also you might try to uh, if you are taking in the terms of profit sector you might try to bring up too many uh, too many patients in the health sector let's take an example from the health sector too many patients you are trying to take in in a day but you are affecting on the quality of the treatment that you are giving to the customer uh, the patient so in the long term reputation of the customer's health suffer sorry the patient's health is suffer and the reputation of the hospital is also gone okay key services some key services are there that should be in the public hand only like transport because to ensure that effective delivery is there right now again in a democracy okay now we are talking from the point of government uh, the politics okay in a democratic country what happens we all know what is democratic what is democratic democratic is when various parties have the right to say what they want to unlike in dictatorship where one party decides and everyone follows it okay so democratic in the democratic country political parties argue over the nature of public policy how they have to go okay most if you see the left leaning governments they prefer a large state sector they believe that keep everything in the state under the control of the state where the state is going to spend they are going to decide whom to employ whom not to employ where is the right leaning government they prefer more private sector more relaxed less interference from the government so you see the difference is there we don't know why is the difference why left leaning government prefer uh, sector state sector and right prefers private sector but whatever it is they might be having their own assumptions let's not go into it it's not important why they are different important is differences are there okay second so changing policy objective means what public sector are required to change over time okay both in size and what they are asked to do sometimes they have to change in size also sometimes what they are asked to do also they have to need to change so sometimes when government changes what happens public sector organizations grow sometimes because of the change in government public sector organizations grow in size and become very important but on the other hand sometimes it might become smaller and smaller and less important also it could go in any way any direction okay now let us take an example of the healthcare services okay some believe health should be in the public sector and entirely it should be funded by the taxpayer what does it mean for patient everything is free who is the service user who is using the service of the hospital patient patient is the service user here for him everything is free at the point of use when i using the treat getting the treatment everything is free because taxpayer is funding it public sector is providing it everything is free for the patient but others believe and they strongly believe that this is a misuse of public fund because in that way every patient can come and get free treatment right some of the tax man might not pay also actually but the others are getting that benefit it's like a known as free rider benefit you must have heard about this term free rider benefit you are paying and someone else is taking the advantage of it so this is a misuse of public fund so in that way they are trying to say you get the treatment and you pay for it so keep it in the private private sector such as to an insurance or subscription scheme you can have like people should pay for the health services in other ways how by to an insurance or a subscription scheme okay coming to the second example 
we are let's look this from the university education okay some believe your education should be paid by the state some believe students should pay okay let's not go into the debate so much who is correct who is wrong is not the matter matter is differences are there okay some believe it should be state so public sector will come into the picture others believe let's pay so private sector now strategic objectives and leadership how it is different see private sector organizations they are very independent and very standalone companies that means they are answerable to the shareholder okay but public sector they are part of a larger public sector structure all public sector organizations and they cannot add as they wish they cannot add alone one example is nhs what is nhs national health service nhs it's an health authority they cannot add alone and and as it sees fit why why it is funded by government government is one they are funding so many health authorities so one health authority they cannot add according to whatever they wish they cannot say okay our main motive is to maximize shareholder will will add accordingly they cannot do that because it is funded by government and it is very tightly controlled they will be asked what are you doing how are you achieving your objective every every health authority so one health authority cannot operate independently from the others whereas in the private sector one company is independent from the other company they can add according to they see what is fit for them because they only answer to the shareholder so because of that you see second school if a school is in the public sector we all know when we go to the government school how, what is the difference you really have the freedom to do as it likes in terms of what and how it teaches whatever they teach you have to go for it who appoints them where it is located all this is not you cannot decide government decides it okay so here government is the one who is giving this objective next three is remember the three is framework we discussed i told you don't forget the three what are the three years economy effectiveness efficiency okay let's see how you can apply this here each public sector organization must be strategically effective that means you have to make effective decisions to get, uh, achieve your objective second even you are making government policy it does not matter whether profit or not even carrying out government policy you have to be effective public sector second efficient you have they are funded by public money make sure you are efficiently using this money for the correct purpose with whatever resources you have and second third is economical you have to work within the specified budget you cannot go beyond that if you go beyond that you are uneconomical that's how you decide whether you are economical or uneconomical you stay within the budget you are economical go beyond the, uh, beyond the budget uneconomical okay so whatever the budget you have with that you have to de deliver the desired outputs okay agency in not for profit organization okay in not for profit organization see charity is an example of not for profit organization okay there are no residual claims to be paid that means you don't have to pay anyone why because no owners are expecting to earn a profit so in this case relationship between the owners and the manager is very clouded it's not very clear because we know he's the owner he's the manager he manages the shareholders there managers are there managers are there for the shareholder because shareholders are the owner they are going to they have to earn a profit but in this case it's very clouded clouded means not very uh, what happens when a cloud is there you cannot see the sky properly it's very blurred and this thing same for this one also like charity second without residual claims or stocks there is no need for the management to worry about the organization being bought or sold in the marketplace if there is no residual claim i'm talking about the charity why will management even care about whether uh, they are being bought or sold in the marketplace no need to worry so in this case it suggests that managers in the public sector they have a or not for profit organizations have an increased opportunity to pursue self interest 
they will be more likely to be more selfish now they will be thinking about their own self interest because it, they do not care whether what's happening in the organization you buy sell is not their headache they are not answerable so because of this personal self interest and in the place of this owners are the donors in the place of this owners are the donors who are the owners basically they are the donors only because their money is being used so you can say they are the owners of the charity because they contributed to the organization with the ex expectation that they are going to achieve something good by saving some lives or helping the environment or educating people okay even though it's not financial but they anticipate a return from their investment okay if they do not get that investment here expectations are not met they will go and invest elsewhere you understanding so donors are the owners only you can take them as the owners now for example for profits okay the thread of outside takeovers provides the discipline to allow insiders to play a significant role on the board see because in the profit sector what happens there's a thread of outside takeover okay so because of that what will happen the insiders they will play a significant role on the board i'm talking from the profit sector's point of view because they know they are going to be taken over any time if they perform badly so better to perform well they will play a very important role on the board okay i think it's repeated twice my mirror is there okay i think that's a mistake it was repeated two times okay anyway uh, not for profit boards also have a special responsibility for generating and managing financial resources see they are not so disciplined when it comes to not for profit board they are not so disciplined because there is no risk of be, them being taken over that is the main thing but they still have a special responsibility for generating and managing financial resources just because they do not have a thread of takeover does not mean they can just waste the money or use the money any way they want still they have a responsibility for generating and managing financial resources okay financial objective now let's uh, move on to the financial objectives in this one organizations like trade unions and charities now, we all know they are not there to make profit but to benefit some prescribed group of services or groups of people okay and the services that they are going to provide it are limited primarily by the funds available whatever the funds you achieve according to that only you can give the services beyond that you cannot give them because you need the fund so what are their financial aim number 1 raise maximum possible sum each year net of fundraising expense that means whatever the expenses cut off that expenses and get the maximum sum that you can get each year that is one second is spend the sum as efficiently as possible effectively as possible on the target group because you need it okay with the minimum of administration costs reduce administration costs there will be so many costs that you will be incurring we'll be going through it when we are funding it so funding strategy how do you fund not for profit organizations see there are some core cost okay core cost in not for profit organization that needs to be covered there are three it is divided into three headings three areas okay and this core cost are the expenditure budget that are not connected with the level of activity undertaken by an organization see this core cost whatever your activity whether you undertake activity whether you give services you don't give services you are going to incur this cost that's why they are known as core cost okay they are not connected to level of activity you build 10 schools core cost will be like this versus you building one school no it's not like that it does not work that way so they are the cost what are the core cost the cost that will always need to be funded no matter what you are in the public sector you have to fund this cost whatever the project you have second it's very important for the organization to survive without this cost if you do not incur organization will not survive even if it is not directly associated with the specific output now let us go through these three headings number one is management cost is divided into management like governance board meetings you have to do governance board meetings in the public sector second engagement and consultation you have to do it third monitoring and evaluation you have to monitor and evaluate and ceo and associated staff can you can you cut through this cost you cannot you have to go through this cost second it is divided into research and development innovation 
so if you have some new activities you have you are going to incur some cost developing new activities will incur some cost and how you are going to operate also before they attract funding before you actually get this funding you will be incurring this cost you have to build a new road you have to you are uh, investing into some uh, new technology the the government these are the costs that you have to incur second quality assurance you have to make sure quality is assured so you are going to incur this cost and staff training and development you have to train your staff and develop then third so support services like it telephone postage fax finance and audit income generation like fundraising and all marketing for the organization you have to market for this organization otherwise how will they know that the charity is there and NGO is there premises you need some premises for that you have to travel from people to people places to place and personal stuff and all you need stuff so these are the cost now funding strategies for this one creating a core funding strategy has different forms at each stage of a not profit making organization see even a not profit seeking organization also has different stages how profit sector has right growth development maturity decline here also they have similar and accordingly your funding strategy will change there are three stages number one infancy think infancy like that baby who can toddler who can that baby okay newborn baby they're dependent on their parent heavily right for everything same way here also they they are heavily dependent on one funding source one funding source only they are the growth stage initial stage definitely they are going to get one funding source only their source that they are going to get only from one way because of this which can limit independence they are not so independent they are very dependent on that if they do not get that source they cannot uh, work they cannot survive second stage is growth phase funded by multitude of projects see after a certain stage you will be going into multitude of projects so you will be funded by multitude of projects not just one source and there will be many donors okay so because of that it is prone to the pitfalls of mission creep what does it mean when you expand too much too much of projects are going on too much of mission is there okay sometimes it happens that you might become inefficient because you might not be able to uh, give your time to all the projects in your hand you will be sleeping somewhere especially after some initial successes you will be you will be creeping okay it can happen third is maturity and maintenance that time you are at the mature level you are not going to grow any longer but you are safe at that area you can say it's a cash cow right in your profit sector according to the ends of matrix so funding should be derived from a constantly changing mix of sources when you are funding now public sector when you are in the mature level you are using a mix of sources of finance okay not just one at that stage so now let us do a uh, finish test here understanding one okay that's the only test of understanding we have before i end this lecture test your understanding one a museum has previously been government funded okay and operated as a non for profit organization however due to government rationalization the museum has been forced to become a commercial company it has achieved initial funding by listing on the country's stock exchange and issuing shares in a newly formed company okay by listing what are the difference in strategic and operational decisions that a financial manager in the museum is likely to experience in the new business so the scenario is before they were funded by government now they have changed to commercial company what are the differences what impact this could have on the operational and the strategic decisions okay so let us do i have not pasted the copy pasted the answer okay i'm going to write, uh, write the answers on the screen okay by explaining each point okay so now what is the major before i actually write the answer let me ask you what is the major impact the major impact is the shift in the motive before it was not for profit now it's for profit motive now they will be taking decisions on a commercial basis for the profit 
okay and now the important thing is your profit and share will become important okay profit and share price information will become very important to make a decision okay so let me do it okay and profit this is just the general outline okay we are going to go down in the answer and write it in different uh, with different points or different bullet points this is just the basic outline that you need to understand okay now so there are some areas where significant changes will occur okay when you have to write an answer in sbl you cannot write everything general or in under one point you have to know how to separate in different points okay you will be getting different subheadings under it and you will be writing it in different paragraphs so here this answer has around five different points okay and if you are not getting any other point just write it under other other areas or others okay so the first one let's see where the uh, difference will be in the financing decision so you can write the subheading as financing decision i'm just writing the main points you can write it in the sentence in your own words okay so financing decision okay what is the difference before it was not for profit okay or maybe i will make uh, this thing not for profit and commercial okay to differentiate what is the impact here wider range of sources are available wider range of sources of finance in commercial compared to not for profit wider range of sources of finance okay i'm not writing for both the things you can accordingly write for not for profit okay in commercial wider ranges are available for sources of finance then what's next choices will have to be made between various type of various type of finance okay example debt versus equity okay various types whereas in not for profit organization you don't have to consider so much because wide ranges are not available second choices also does not have to be made between various types of finance like debt versus equity but in commercial you have to do it now coming to number 2 okay second area where this differences will affect is what in the dividend decision dividend decision okay extend this now what you have to think about dividend in the not for profit or in the profit organization when it becomes a commercial commercial and profit organization is the same thing you have to consider now here this now you have to consider about this okay so dividend payout you have to consider about dividend payout to shareholders but in not for profit there is no such thing as shareholders you don't have to make any dividend payout okay third area what is the third area investment decision see this is about financial management okay in financial management is very easy to link financial management link with sbl there are three important areas in financial management you do anything it affects three areas financing dividend investment remember this three areas and apply it in sbl because we are talking about financial management okay that's why the first three is from your financial management knowledge okay so investment decision here what is the important when you investing what do you think you think from the point of profit not from the prof, uh, point of social consideration so here commercial 
consideration rather than social okay now your consideration will be from the point of profit if this investment is making a profit i will go ahead otherwise no earlier you see whether it is benefit in the society or not you are building a road you are building infrastructure for the benefit of society are you getting a profit no but now when you're making investment decision think from the point of commercial means profit only okay and now you can also make this is another point under this another thing is diversification you can now easily make diversification into other products and markets you can easily expand scale yourself when you are having a profit rather than in the not for profit you cannot do that so diversification don't write your answers like this in the table format you have to write in sentences under different paragraphs this is for your explanation i'm explaining you that's the thing i'm making it in points okay the answers is there in your textbook you can get it from there in your kaplan textbook at the end of the chapter chapter this is it's chapter 7 I guess. Ah, uh, no. This is chapter twenty-three. Okay, chapter twenty-three in your textbook. Okay. Now, so diversification into products or markets is now possible. Okay. you can even expand by merger or take over okay which is not possible in not for profit earlier so expansion expand by merger or take over anything is possible now let us go to the fourth one so the first three decision from the financial management are over okay the fourth one is what thread of take over now you have a thread of take over this to answer this point okay you need a little bit of sense your present sense has to be there in the case study that you have just read this you cannot answer from your knowledge how do you know uh, thread of take over see the case study uh, if you see here they told that now it is listed on stock exchange correct it was a museum now it is stock listed on stock exchange so once you are listed on stock exchange means you are public you are open to public you are prone for take over that's the ring thing when you are listed there's a risk of you being taking over taken over so thread of take over okay if you don't read the case study properly you will not understand okay so now government gives up its ownership entirely okay so what happens because of that now the firm is subject to take over bids okay so i don't think i have to write that point here thread of take over itself is understood okay government loses his ownership and daily gives up his ownership so there are chances of take over bit and fifth point is other areas this you can write anything that you think is applicable for the sums okay things like what pricing okay pricing pricing will matter the way you put the price will matter because you have to think around the point of the profit not for the benefit of the so marketing the way you market will be different you have to now think about marketing staffing you have to staff so all this thing etc there could be many etc things okay now will be lastly free of government constraint now government cannot uh, come and say that how they are going to price how they are going to do marketing how they are over which staff they are going to put it's not the headache of a government anymore it's for the company to decide so they will be will be free of government constraints you see so this this is the way you need to answer any sbl answer for 5 6 marks or it could be for 8 marks 7 8 marks you need to answer but in different paragraphs with different this the five points other areas thread of take over investment dividend decision financing decision you can write it as a subheading under that you are going to write the points okay so that's it thank 
thank you for watching and see you in the next lecture the next lecture will be a separate section new section section c strategy so we are over with the governance uh, section finally and so see you in the next video till then take care